Hi, I'm Kevin Cruz with Kodak PixPro. I'm the marketing specialist here, and today we're going to talk about 360 video uh, production and post production. So, I travel to a lot of trade shows and I talk to a lot of people, a lot of professionals in the industry, and a lot of beginners trying to get their career started, and they're looking at these new immersive technologies. And a lot of them are timid and they're intimidated by this technology and all the equipment and sort of the, the lack of education out there. And so I, I let them all know that getting, getting started with 360 video doesn't have to cost them an arm and a leg. There's a lot of um, entry level consumer grade products out there that are really good quality um, and a lot of software support that allow you to finish and produce high, high level end um, 360 videos at an affordable price. Um, so like I tell everyone, just go ahead, jump in there, get your unit, get your software and just start shooting and have fun. So to get into 360 video, um, you just got to know a couple things, right? Um, the first is how 360 got started. I'd say it started out with having multiple cameras and sort of putting the two videos together to create a full sphere, right? And as the technology gets better, um, the cameras are improving. Um, and eventually they've turned into a single camera unit with two lenses on it that records a full spherical video. Depending on what your budget is or how much work you want to put into, that'll depend on which camera you want to choose. The multiple camera rigs tend to get higher resolution um, and cost a little bit more and they also involve more post-production as far as stitching. The single camera units um, tend to be more affordable um, and they give you sort of a fixed resolution and they automatically stitch for you so you don't have to do too much of that. So once you've started shooting in 360, you'll start learning that you need to um, prepare for, for a couple things, right? For example, you, everything is in the shot, right? The people behind the camera, the people in front of the camera, everyone's in the camera. So you'll have to start paying attention to um, what equipment you bring to the set or to the location and how many people you're allowed to have there and where everyone's going to hide or how you're going to monitor. Um, there's lots of variables, right? Um, whether you're going to have the camera in motion or if you're going to have the camera still on a, on a monopod. Let's talk a little bit about shooting with audio. So most, most of the 360 cameras on the market have uh, uh, audio that records inside the camera, right? But your situation might not allow for good audio if you're standing too far away or too close. And so you're probably going to want to consider having um, wireless mics connected to your, uh, to your actors or the people in the shot and then syncing that audio to your video file after. So you're going to want to have audio claps and use a lot of the standard procedures that you would use in video production. One of the cool features with our cameras is that we have remote controls that can turn on and off your cameras for recording and switching different camera modes or photography mode. And so that also helps in not being so much in the shot. It also helps with syncing your cameras and it's a very useful tool um, when you're out on the field. So you've uh, shot your video, you recorded good audio, now you're ready for some post-production. So whether you shot with your multi-rig camera, you're going to have to figure out um, how to stitch them together. If you're shooting with the Kodak PixPro 360 cameras, we have um, free software that comes with the camera that does your stitching for you. Um, we also have our, our Orbit, which uh, has internal stitching that already has the equirectangular file ready for you, which is the full 360 degrees laid out flat on the, on the screen. So now you have your 360 file, your equirectangular file, and now you got to get into editing. Whether you got to correct the color balance or you got to add music, make cuts, fade in, fade out. Luckily, most of the editing softwares out there have adopted 360 video into their systems that allow you to easily um, edit and cut 360 degree videos. Um, but there, it gets a little bit more complicated than that because depending on how you shot it, whether there was motion or, or still, um, you have to have uh, more robust tools to get stabilization in, in the mix because if you're moving and people are enjoying this in VR, it might cause some nausea. And so this is where we get into uh, stabilization software.
With stabilization being such a key factor in enjoyable 360 degree videos, um, we've started using Relens by Revision Effects. For example, I took a trip to Egypt to where I got on a camel and all I had was my 360 camera on a, on a selfie stick. And as you can imagine, the camel was moving, I was moving, all my balance was off. Uh, but at the same time, that footage it was so good for me and I really wanted it, um, but it was super shaky. And so I used the stabilization tool that they offered and voila, like it was so nice and enjoyable, very stable, and it totally made the difference on, on how I share it and how people view it. Uh, some, some features that um, get sort of overlooked in 360 video is that you don't have to only shoot in 360 video. The, the beauty about these cameras is that you can also take frames and use it as 2D video because you're recording everything happening all around you so then you can sort of cut uh, flat video from this side and then cut flat video from this side and then you have multiple camera angles and multiple different directions of video all through one camera which I think is a very underutilized feature of 360 camera cameras because you don't have to just be in 360, you can also shoot 360 but for a 2D video. Not only can you cut different angles from your 360 video, but you can also make pan uh, motions and move the frame around inside of the 360 video and record that in, in flat in post-production, which gives you a lot more control over your, your video versus having to record the pan shot, but then you can't go back and change the direction or the motion of the video after the fact. In 360 video, you can do this, and this feature is also available in Relens. Once you've shot your video and you have this awesome video you've edited and put a lot of time into, you can go ahead and share that on Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo. Uh, all, the, uh, all the platforms are continuing to incorporate 360 into their, into their technologies and you don't have to share it just on a VR headset. You can share it on your cell phone, you can share it on a tablet. Um, it's very, very much uh, a shareable uh, a medium that's growing in popularity. So that's, that's how you sort of get a 360 video produced, right? You got your camera, you got all your equipment, you have your post editing software. But remember, the key factor in getting into 360 video production is actually getting your hands on the camera, going out there shooting, and actually editing your video and sharing it. Other than that, it'll always be sort of a what if, can I do it, am I scared, a lot of timidness, right? The only way you can learn how to swim is by jumping in the pool. And so uh, get in there.